Greetings and welcome to the channel. This is the Albatross Corvette, which were a class of 10 operated by Italy, Denmark, Indonesia and the Netherlands. Designed by the Italian shipyard Ansaldo in the early 1950s to operate primarily in shallow waters. Their missions included submarine surveillance, convoy flanking and coastal defence operations. The design was selected to be produced for NATO navies using funds under the Mutual Defence Assistance Program, with three ships built for Italy, four for Denmark and one for the Netherlands. Additionally, two corvettes, the Patimura and the Sultan Hassanuddin, were ordered directly by Indonesia a few years after the initial order, outside of the MDAP. Deliveries continued until the last ship Bologna was delivered in Denmark in 1957. Albatross, the lead ship, was laid down on the 27th of June 1953 and entered service on the 1st of June 1955. It remained with the 10th Anti-Submarine Squadron of the 1st Naval Division until October of 1962, carrying out escort missions, submarine search operations and intercoastal patrols. She was also used as a fishery surveillance ship in the Sicilian Channel at one point during her long career before being decommissioned in 1986. The design had a flush decked hull, quite different from their wartime predecessors the Gabbiano, with quite the sleek form. They resembled a shortened Chantaro class frigate in some ways. They were powered by two diesel engines giving 3900 kilowatts or 5200 brake horsepower, which drove two shafts and propelled the ships a speed of 19 knots or 35 kilometers per hour. As built, the ships were armed with two 76mm SMP-3 automatic cannons with single turrets, one forward and one aft, and a single twin 40mm Beaufort's mount. The SMP-3 was the first model of Italian automatic 76mm guns and could fire bursts of shells at 50 rounds per minute from a 14 round drum magazine. Reloading was automatic at 90 degrees elevation and it took approximately 3 seconds. Able to fire a 6kg shell out to a range of 16,000 metres, they were served by an Italian-built radar fire control director, the SPQ-2. This was an Italian radar introduced in the 1960s, which shouldn't be confused with the older American SPQ-2 of the same name. The reloading system was very complex and unfortunately the Dutch vessel experienced an accidental explosion thought to be caused by a lubrication issue. Anti-submarine armament consisted of two hedgehogs fitted forward with depth charge projectors and racks aft. Initially the class was fitted with Menon ASW mortars aft and a depth charge chute. These proved too large for the Corvette so in the 1960s these were substituted with their wartime Menon depth charge throwers used on the Gabbiano class. The Dutch struggled to service a single ship class and after the SMP-3 explosion the Netherlands found Lynx to be entirely unsuitable. The lone Dutch Corvette was handed back to the United States after five years of service. The US then reassigned her to Italy where she was renamed the Aquila in 1961. Across the class the SMP-3 guns proved to be a failure, being too complex and unreliable and they adversely affected the ship's seaworthiness. As a result, Italy rearmed its ships in 1963, replacing the 76mm guns with single 40mm Beaufort's guns, with all existing guns being upgraded to the 1970s Breda Beaufort's standard. Danish ships used the US Patton 3-inch guns, which were retained for their remaining service lives. The Danish ship Diana was discarded in 1974, with Flora being stricken in 1978. The two final Danish ships, Bologna and Triton, were discarded in 1981 as they were replaced by a new class of corvette. Two of the Italian ships, Albatross and El Cione, were equipped for minesweeping, being fitted with paravanes and their supporting equipment, although they still retained their corvette designation. Albatross was used as an accommodation hulk until she was stricken from the register in 1989. The three remaining ships were discarded in 1991. The Albatross class corvettes have a length of 69.5 meters, a beam of 9.7 meters and a draft of 2.8 meters. They have a displacement of 950 tons at full load and were powered by two Fiat M409 diesel engines rated to 5,200 horsepower, giving them a top speed of 18 knots or 33 kilometers per hour, although they are slightly faster in game at 21 knots or 39 kilometers per hour. The ship has a crew of up to 117 personnel and is armed with two 76mm guns, 48 hedgehog mortars, two side launch depth charges, 
and a twin 40mm early Breda Bofors mount. The ship has access to a powerful air search and track radar and high explosive variable time fuse shells, which makes it an effective anti-air platform. The ship also has access to a Cold War radar rangefinder, which gives you the ability to quickly and accurately determine the heading and trajectory of your foes and get the first shots out. Despite being classed as a corvette, in War Thunder the ship is classed as a frigate and it really plays like one. Placed at battle rating 3.7, it is well suited to fight into war and reserve tier destroyers, as well as enforce capstone supremacy over other coastal vessels. This BR sees a lot of diverse combat from fully coastal matches to the occasional 4.7 up tier, and is my current favourite battle rating. The 76mm SMP3, while considered a failure operationally in War Thunder, it is ironically one of the best performing 76mm cannons. Though the gun can only be loaded with high explosive shells, the OM-1 and the OM-2, this is not too much of an issue as the stock shell has 10mm of pen and the upgrade has 11. The gun's best feature is that they fire rapidly and they do not overheat, so there are no issues with accuracy, unlike the Otto Malara, the American 3-inch and the Soviet 76mm. This allows you to outgun some more heavily armed frigates at long ranges and in a protracted fight due to better overall accuracy. The 14 round magazine is large enough for a powerful burst damage with a 7 to 9 second reload depending on your crew level. This reload is predictable and manageable and gives you a moment to check your surroundings and monitor for threats. If necessary, the ship is also able to manage sustained fire by alternating reloads between the fore and aft guns. The shells do significant damage to deck modules, AA guns, torpedoes and bridges and can even batter their way through some lighter destroyer skins. Constantly attacking the same target with these guns can have diminishing returns, so I like to get in the habit of letting an enemy ship burn, then during my reload, make course adjustments, look for threats, and once the guns are green, recommence the assault. However, they do lack the ability to deal with anti-frag armor, so these targets should be avoided or only fought with some destroyer backup. Just remember that if you change shell types halfway through a magazine, when you change back it will be the same magazine and thus try only to change once a magazine is fully spent. Wasting a few shots is always preferable to starting a fresh contact with a three round magazine. The ship has enough ammo to last most of the battle, but in longer fights, if you don't use correct ammo economy, you do run the risk of dry stores. The ship's hull and large crew lead the ship to be fairly resilient, with only a few major modules to target, she can be tricky to take down. Destroyers and torpedoes are your only real threats, as both of these things can catch you in a chase. Typically on most maps you will only have time to make to one capture zone, and you are heavily reliant on the team to capture these for you. As such, the ship really needs to work hard to support its allies, so games where you are actively pursuing this will see great success. As a result of the modernized and powerful weaponry, the Albatross can be played like a miniature Colm-class frigate, able to take out lone destroyers and batter them into submission through fires and repair cycles, as well as suppress aircraft with her powerful main armament. In larger engagements, a harassment role should be taken to try and weaken the overall effectiveness of enemy firepower. Rapidly switching from target to target, aiming to clear the decks of a ship, and then starting a fire before moving on to a new target. Overall, I think the Albatross is actually the best top tier Italian coastal, despite the fact that the Sayeta is a much more appealing ship, both visually and with its armament. But in terms of Silver Line earnings, uh, research point earnings, fun, and uh, just overall chaos and a good battle rating, the Albatross is a great ship. Now it doesn't, I don't think it will really cope much higher than 3.7, but feel free to try it out. I had a few games at 4.7, as you can see from the footage, we did rather well. And although my opponents weren't the best, you know, it was effective against those ships. And I was an absolute menace to any coastal boat in the vicinity. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because I have plenty more to come. If you'd like to know more on how to play the Albatross, tune in tomorrow because I have a few of my games unedited with some live commentary that will help to explain my thinking in the heap of battle. Until next time, Commander Tyrael, out.